Very good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime News here on TV1. My name is Devi Paldano. Now, before we head into your stories in more detail, let's first take a look at your headlines. Twenty-eight injured in an accident in Nyatiantota. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa arrives in the island. Hong Kong protesters urge world leaders to support them at the G20 summit. Now in one of your headline making stories, two people were killed and two others injured when a mound of earth collapsed in Potopitia Rakwana. Now police said the earth slip had buried a group of people who were excavating a school building. The injured are receiving treatment at the Potopitia hospital. Meanwhile, 28 people were injured in a bus accident in the Uye Oya Watta in Yatiantota. The police said the bus had fallen into a 15-meter precipice. <laughs> the injured are receiving treatment at the Caravanala Hospital. <laughs> the cause of the accident is yet to be ascertained. The SLTB bus was travelling from Pellampite to Avisavalle. Today's parliament proceedings commenced at 10.30 a.m. under the auspices of Speaker Karujaya Surya. Stay tuned to News First as we keep you updated. In more of, the international, in more of your local news, South African President Cecil Cyril Ramaphosa arrived at the Bandar Naika International Airport this morning. The South African head of state paid a visit to the island en route to the G20 summit in Osaka, Japan. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe welcomed the South African president and his delegation at the Bandar Naika International Airport. The JVP held a public meeting in Panadura yesterday. In 2015, an election was held in August. From the UNP, Ranil Vikramasinghe came before the people and said they will build a new country in 60 months. They said they will build the economy. They said they will bring in investors. Now 47 months have gone from the 60 months they promised. There is only 13 months left. We have the largest amount of debt up to date. The 2018 Central Bank report was released. According to the report, the total amount our country owes is 12 billion rupees. The government cannot answer the questions on how we are going to pay back these loans. They do not know anything beyond burdening the general public and taxing the people. This government, just like the Rajapaksa government, sacrificed and sold our country's resources. Because of them, our country has fallen into a huge debt trap. In such a backdrop, they allocate 45 million rupees for the opposition leader to buy a car. They allocate 43.5 million rupees for the State Minister of Lands to also purchase a new vehicle. They allocate 19.9 million rupees for the Minister of Candy and Heritage and Candy Development to renovate his house. The total is approximately 100 million rupees. Therefore, I ask you, is this a people-friendly government? No, it's a government against the people. <laughs> If this government is to be in power for another year, it is a very serious concern. This government that created an anarchy in this country, the government that could not assure the security of the general public, the government that signs agreements with foreign nations and sells this nation, a government that betrayed the people of this country, and the government who kicked the people of this country around should immediately resign. We ask the government to resign in order to preserve what's left of their dignity. <laughs> Up next are the views expressed by UNP parliamentarian Harshana Raju Karuna at a media briefing held in Colombo yesterday. The ruling and the opposition parties got together and held a parliamentary select committee. Now the opposition MPs do not participate in the sessions and currently we see several accusations against the committee. There is no political motive in this. The ultimate goal is to bring the wrongdoers before the people. Previously, Prime Minister Ranim Vikramasinghe provided statements before the Presidential Commission. Even this time around, as a democratic leader, Prime Minister Ranim Vikramasinghe will provide his fullest support if he is summoned before the Parliamentary Select Committee.
leader of the indigenous community, Uru Varge Vanilato, attended an event in Dambulla yesterday. A tree planting campaign was held at the Ibankato area in Dambulla under the patronage of Uru Varige Vanilato. Today, when it rains heavily, the authorities pre-check and remove the residents from unsafe areas due to potential landslides. But this is not the solution. Similarly, providing relief packets and washing off the houses after a flood and relocating the people at the same place is not the solution. They provide relief during rainstorms. Providing relief packages is not the solution. We have to figure out a permanent solution for these issues. We have tons of environment days and ministries in this country. They talk and discuss a lot about nature. Sometimes they invite me too. What they do is gather, discuss, have lunch, have a cup of tea and the ones from far away places are given transport facilities and everyone go back joyfully. That is not what should be done. Something which goes beyond this concept must be initialized. <laughs> RNPSB Basnaika assumed duties as the 23rd Controller General of the Department of Immigration and Emigration. RNPSB Basnaika commenced his duties following religious observances held at the head office of the Department of Immigration and Emigration this morning. Minister of Internal and Home Affairs and Provincial Councils and Local Government Vajira Abe Wardana and several other dignitaries were present at the event.